Support for this podcast comes from the Central Valley Journalism Collaborative, connecting communities with the resources, infrastructure, and networks to ensure a vibrant local free press. From KVPR in Fresno, this is Central Valley Daily. It's Tuesday, October 8th. I'm Elizabeth Arkalian. In the face of the devastation left behind by Hurricane Helene in the southeast, some people from the Central Valley have stepped up to help those in need. We're the people who say, we can help you. We're here. You're not alone. We're going to help you get through this. Coming up, we'll hear from a Fresno woman working with the American Red Cross to help people impacted by Hurricane Helene. But first, today's headlines. Candidates for Fresno County's District 3 supervisor seat faced off last night in a voter forum. Incumbent Sal Quintero touted his strong relationships on the board. It's been interesting being on a vote of uh, one vote out of five to try to change things. But as it's come along, uh, I think we've become uh, able to understand each other. But his challenger, Fresno City Council member Luis Chavez, says more can be done on the issues like county zoning. I don't believe warehouses should be placed right next to a school. We're trying to correct that. But I think for future planning, and I think this is why the the general plans are so important, you should have those built in right away so that you're not dealing with these issues later on down the line. A full recording of the forum will be available at kvpr.org. Ballots have started reaching voters in California with just weeks left until Election Day. This year, residents will vote on 10 statewide ballot propositions. And this week on Central Valley Daily, we're bringing you what different ballot measures you might see on your ballot mean. Proposition 4 would fund projects across the state to help protect Californians from the risks and impacts of climate change. Alejandro Lasso with our partner CalMatters has this explainer. Prop 4 would let California borrow $10 billion through state bonds to pay for climate and environmental projects. Just under $4 billion of that would go to provide safe drinking water and protect people from floods and droughts. Another nearly $2 billion would go to wildfire prevention and extreme heat projects. The measure would also fund parks and wildlife, coastal protection, and clean energy efforts. Taxpayers would pay back the bonds with interest, so the measure could end up costing Californians as much as $16 billion, according to a legislative analysis. Supporters say we need to act now because the threats of climate change are too urgent. Opponents say the state should not take on new debt to pay for these projects. That's CalMatters' Alejandro Lasso. The Central Valley grows the majority of the world's almonds, walnuts, and pistachios. But as California's wildfires become more severe, the crop yield may be shrinking. KVPR's Esther Quintanilla reports on a new study from UC Davis. Between 2018 and 2022, researchers looked at various nut orchards in the valley to study how the trees stored energy in periods of heat and prolonged drought. But after a dire wildfire season in 2020, the researchers shifted to examine how the smoke affected the orchards, too. The study found the trees produced a significantly smaller crop following the fires. In some cases, orchards saw a 15 to 50 percent decrease in production. The study suggests a combination of low light due to heavy smoke and higher than normal ozone levels may have impacted the tree's photosynthesis process. Researchers are hoping to continue studying the impacts. For KBPR News... I'm Esther Quintanilla. Record temperatures continue to stick around early into October. The National Weather Service office in Hanford says Monday marked seven straight days of record highs in several valley cities. That includes Hanford, Madera, and Merced. Fresno has seen six straight days of record temperatures. Most heat records broken on Monday were set just last year. Support for Central Valley Daily comes from the members of KVPR. Join at $8 or more per month and access ad-free NPR podcasts through NPR+. Plus. Give now at kvpr.org slash donate. And now to our main story. It's been over a week since devastating flooding caused by Hurricane Helene hit the southeastern United States, devastating parts of western North Carolina the hardest. Floodwaters swept some small towns completely off the map, with the official death toll of Hurricane Helene now over 230. But in the face of that devastation, there are people who are trying to do good. That includes Dana Sakota. She's a retired Fresno Unified teacher and one of 27 American Red Cross disaster workers from the Central Valley, assisting disaster victims thousands of miles away. 
Sakota is a volunteer stationed at a shelter just south of Asheville, North Carolina. She joined our producer, Jonathan Linden, for a conversation and talked about what it was like to first arrive at her shelter. The hard part was that since it was so soon after the storm, the building didn't have any power and they were running generators to create light. And you got, at the time of the disaster, there was probably three or 400 people you know, seeking refuge inside the shelter. And then once the, sh- the storm passes and folks go back to their homes to see the conditions of them, they may often return if they don't have things available there for them to you know, go back to. So that's where we are now. Most people have been able to figure out if they still have homes, which in this area, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of devastation. And we have a, a huge population in our shelter of veterans. And their facility that they were at is gone, completely gone. And it's tough when you know that you don't have a home anymore to go back to, that everything is gone. And times that by several hundred people. What has been going through your mind seeing all this devastation firsthand on the ground? Well, as a Red Cross volunteer, you know, I did 141 days of volunteering last year out of Fresno. So last year I was in Guam. I did Mississippi. I did a couple other states. I was in Vermont. And the disasters are all unique in their way. And, you know, you drive through and you see the destruction of Mother Nature. And it's kind of weird because you just don't realize how precious things are. And then all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, everything's gone. And then you have people who are saying, who can help me? And the nice thing is, that's us. We're the people who say, we can help you. We're here. You're not alone. We're going to help you get through this. And we're going to help you find, you know, what you need. If somebody comes up and they say, hey, I need a new pair of socks and some underwear, we hand them to them. Here you go. And what stories have you been hearing from these people that you've been helping at the shelter you've been stationed at? Well, like I said, we have about 60 plus veterans here and their entire complex is gone. And even the Red Cross chapter office here in Asheville is totally gone. And then other folks are saying that, you know, one gentleman went back to his home recently to discover that several things are missing, you know, because... You know, it's sad to say that sometimes people take advantage of disasters. And uh, so that's devastating. You come back and you say, you know, even what was there that was salvageable is now gone. So that's, I mean, that's like two disasters in one. It's like you already had the disaster and now you come back and what you had is now gone. Right now, another hurricane, Hurricane Milton, is heading towards Florida. It's not expected to impact North Carolina, but... Are you expecting to stick around in North Carolina right now? Uh, What have you been told? This shelter here is not going to shut down anytime soon. These folks don't have anywhere to go. So we have teams already on the ground in Florida. We tend to pre-deploy when we know that something is happening. So at the present moment, the Red Cross already has hundreds of folks either there already or scrambling to get there as soon as possible. And they call that pre-deployment. And they go there, they get their assignments, they hunker down until the storm passes because we never know where the storm's going to hit. And then once we find out where the devastation is, then they send out teams, set up shelters. But am I going to pack up and go to Florida? Uh, I was in Louisiana two weeks ago for their hurricane. So it just depends if they need me to go there or if they need me to stay here. So I have already said that I will extend here because we are getting this shelter in tip-top condition and making it as comfortable as possible. Dana, was there anything else you wanted to add? Or I hope that people hear this and decide, hey, that's something I want to do. I can do that. I've got the ability to contribute and do like I did, go online, put their application in, and press the button and get going. You know, there's a, there's a ton of things people can do locally, right there in town, right there in Fresno, in the community, in the valley, ton of things. And 
we're here for the folks. We're here for the clients. We do this for them because everybody needs help and everybody needs support when these sort of things happen. So that's the whole reason why I come. No one's paying me to be here. And I just enjoy helping the folks, setting up things. It's all directed completely around the people who are devastated. That was Dana Sakota speaking with our producer, Jonathan Linden. Sakota is from Fresno and a volunteer with the American Red Cross. And that does it for today's show. Thanks so much for listening. Today's episode was produced by Jonathan Linden and KVPR with support from the Central Valley Journalism Collaborative. I'm Elizabeth Arkalian. Find the latest local news anytime at kvpr.org.